Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to Let's Play Imperion, which I believe will now be episode 6 of Learn to Survive. I better turn my UI back on so I can see what I'm doing. Now, it is the day after I left you last time. I have done some various scouting and as you know I got a bit of my ship shot away before I went to the POI where I didn't recognize it and got killed. Sad times. However, in the meantime, I have mined out the copper, which was down here, and the iron that was up here, and my water generator is over there, um, to help get some resources on the go. So we have some extra copper and some extra iron here. This is mainly going to be because I would like to queue up at least bringing in the the uh, shark hauler which um, was one of the vessels I reviewed in my Imperion top 10 or top 5 sorry SVs um, it's going to be a secondary SV big carrier SV really and this one I can build up to be warp capable um, the only thing I'm really going to be missing is going to be some silicon. Now, I would have mined that out, but it's a long way away. And to be honest, I want to put the base down. And the base is going to give me the ability to build the much better drill. Because I drilled it with the old drill, which is oh so slow. So, two days main foray is going to be to put down our base which is finished now i have been having a look at the planet and thinking about where i would like to put my base now to me there are two major options however both are going to upset our xerox friends um the first one is around here or here it's fairly equatorial so fairly good sunlight relatively close to all these ores. The other one is over here, which is still relatively close to Xerax and relatively close to the ores. I mean, ultimately, the more oddly, the more northerly you get it quite often, the better your solar is. Um, but I'm thinking here or here are fairly good options. There's a crash sentinel front over there. That's the Elder's Tomb. We went to last time and I'm thinking this is where we're going to put down a base so my plan now is to go and scout that out yes Mr. Scout that means you um oh one thing I want to do before I scout that out first quickly as the scout's been switched off is go to my hover fridge and uh take myself some food I made and put that in the fridge because cold burgers, excellent cold burgers, very tasty. We'll put those in the fridge as well. Now I've cleared out the inventory of the ship, most of it stacked up inside here, um, which hopefully will not get shot up. I'm not expecting a Xerox attack on this anytime soon, he says. Mm, nope, not expecting a Xerox attack. When I get a base, I probably will fairly quickly be expecting a Xerox attack. So, with that in mind, we're probably going to need to get some guns up fairly quick. However, the one thing I haven't done before I left, which I intended to do, was get myself some more bullets and some more um, shotgun cartridges on the go. So, I think we're going to have to turn this on and lay ourselves up some shotgun cartridges because we got through quite a lot of those i uh, get 30 a pop so we'll take six and we'll take a bunch of projectile rounds as well i uh, get 50 of those a pop so we will take um maybe 20 and start those making do 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 do, -do. turn it on there we go so with that there is one other thing I think we need to think about now 
the nook which I have created has some guns on it. Now I believe, and I need to check this really because I haven't double checked, is that it has not mini gun turrets but it has 35mm cannon turrets on it. So we're talking about some of these. Now I am going to have to unlock these in order to be able to make ammo for them. Because I believe I am going to need some ammo rounds for it. Which I can't seem to make in this constructor. That must have been changed. You used to be able to make the ammo those ammo rounds in the small constructor. So that's a bit depressing. So we are definitely probably going to need to take some materials with us. And hope we can make those because I am expecting a Xerox attack fairly quickly. So of the things that I have switched back over to this base, I am going to move back over some iron. In fact, I'll probably take quite a lot of the iron. Um, I'm gonna need to grab some more copper from the other thing. I will take some nitrocellulose. I won't need masses of that, but enough to get some bullets up. I'm going to take some power. I might take the medical device because I believe that's unlock level 12 and I haven't made one. So I might be able to squeeze one in the base without um, pushing the CPU cap. We'll have a look at that. In fact, I'm going to take all of that. And we'll grab some copper from here because I'm gonna need I'm gonna need the copper. So four again to get to those, yep, to get to that. So connected toolbar is up. Get on here. We'll put the copper directly in there and jump in. Now, let's fly. This time I'll try and fly in the right direction. Because the whole reason I ended up at the Elder Tomb last time, rather than the submerged tank where I wanted to go was because I flew the wrong way. So we are going to try and make sure I fly the right direction. Nope. Which is west. Go west. Life is not going to be peaceful there, but nevertheless, it's what we're going to do. We're going to go west and try and have a scout out of these spots. When placing the base, um, yeah, northerly seems to get more sunshine, even though it's slightly counterintuitive. Equatorial, you would expect to get the most sunshine, but it doesn't seem to. So, you can bear that in mind. Elyon may change that in time. But at the moment, that seems to be how it works. You want to place the base with the solar panels facing east to west. Um, because north to south won't do you a lot of favours. Because obviously the sun tends to go rise in the east, sets in the west. So I'm thinking this area here, we're coming up on it. Or we're coming up on this big open zone there. And... Is that me or does that look like some weird sort of structure over there? Or is that just trees? That's just trees in the distance making it making me feel like it's some sort of um, Stonehenge. So we were looking at round here on the map. Yes, round here, which it's getting is a bit dark here. Or over here. So I'm thinking over here is going to be my better bet. It's not as flat as I would have liked. I would have liked it to be a little bit flatter, to be honest. Um, need to look for a good spot where I'm not going to have to dig too much of the base out. I think we'll stick it up here. Just up here. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to stick it. So we are going to hop out and decide if we can stick the base around here somewhere. Looks reasonable, it's not too bad. 
Yeah, I don't like that just because purely it might be a bit of a sod with a hover vessel. I mean, this could be a problem in itself. I mean, the beauty of over here is that you can get off the water with a hover vessel quite easy and then go from there. So actually, yeah, I'm changing my mind. I am going to go for the sandy, sandy, grassy knoll, sandy knoll, whatever you want to call it over here. This seems like my preferred option. Now I'm going to go right around here somewhere on this nice little beach where I can live in my very own beachside resort. So with that we'll bring up the factory and we should be able to go to library and if we go to bases and the library We'll have the nook completed here. And here is the nook. And it is going to be a little bit buried here. I can't see a way of not having it a bit buried. Let's see if we can sort that out. I don't want to have to dig, dig her out too much. Let's see. Let's hope this goes all right. This is always the tricky bit with placing bases. Is getting them so you don't have to do too much to dig them out. What do we reckon? That seems reasonable. Let's hope that's going to work. And three, two, one, place. One nook. One Tulura pod that we're going to have to shoot in the face. Thank you. We will take your yummies. Thank you. All right, let's have a quick check round. Oh, look, no texture. And this side is not under the sand, so that's lovely. Oddly, the glowies are on and the power is on, which must mean we're getting a little bit of power from the sunlight. There she is. Always a running. We've got a small constructor. We've got, I believe that's a large constructor. Upgradable. So, we are going to start off with looking at the fuel situation. And we're going to we'll see how far that gets us. Oh, not as far as I would have liked. There we go. We'll plonk that in. That will give us plenty of fuel. I don't expect to need a vast amount more than that. Um... Look, uh, scout, copper, there we go. First thing we're going to need, we've got no two station here, we've got a cooker, we've got some fridges, so where was the, let's stick that in the fridge, we've got some fridges, we've got a clone, clone chamber, which I will probably replace with the, um, with the health bay. Or medical bay because that will be a lot better and the medical bay does double as a clone chamber we have an ammo box which is currently empty and we need to make let's have a look here we've got bridge input output all things because there's only one one thing of goodies here so let's check out what ammo we need. If you're uncurious as to what ammo you need, you can check right here. It says ammunition required 15 mil rounds. So we need 15 mil rounds. We can build 15 mil rounds. That is not a problem. Um, come on, constructor. Give me 15 mil rounds, please. Um, and we want those to go into the ammunition box. Let's build at least, let's build 4,000 rounds. That should mean that the gun turrets, there's only two, can at least get started with some defenses if they need to. And we can check this because as soon as we get some ammo here appear in the box, which we now have, you can actually go into P you can actually go and look at your devices, which will be your turrets. 
We can check what our turrets are set on. We do not want them set on Predator. This tends to default out, so we'll, we'll do this. This won't really matter. Hover Vessel's base drone doesn't seem to matter too much on bases unless there's big capital ships in the area. But we will apply to group because we do not want the turrets taking out um, Predators and wasting our ammo on it. But we can now access the gun turret and we can even reload the gun turret. There we go. And there we go. So our gun turret works. And if we want to be really sure we, we're we ready for a fight, we can actually go into the other one and reload that one too. And there we are. They are reloaded and ready if we need them. Here we have space for grow plots. If we can lay our hands on some grow plots with a grow light. We have a nice little bed to sleep in. We have an armor locker in which we can use our armor. Oh, I've got some war meat, which we'll put in the fridge. Um, which fridge is this? This is input fridge. Perfect. So in the input fridge, we'll put that. And in fact, we'll take that one and we'll put that and that in the input fridge. We've got a nice little switch. Turn the grow light on. Same for the cooker, even though you can actually do it just by going in there, but we can sort that out. I do want to check our CPU level because this was made a little while ago. So our CPU level should be good. We are pretty much on the limit, but we are within CPU limits. So that is a good thing. Let's have a look here. How much CPU does this use? Let's put it on the bar and try and find out because we might have to put it on the bar to find out how much CPU it uses. It doesn't seem to say. Which is somewhat disappointing. Because I would like to put the medical chamber in. And in doing so, I will probably get rid of the clone chamber. So I'm going to just get and do that. Oh, wrong button. We will use our multi-tool so that we can rescue the block. And then we can straight away put the medical chamber in. Now it doesn't fit with the color scheme, but we can sort that later. We will check our CPU points now. We're still within CPU limits. And we have a medical chamber in which we can heal ourselves up with basic heals. And we'll put the spare clone chamber in there just in case. A good little tip is that if you are in dire straits, you can use your multi-tool to pick this back up and turn it into any one of the other medical units you might need at a later date. It's a bit cheesing it, but it's effective if you're going to die horribly, which sometimes happens to me. So with that, let's have a look at our statistics. We're still not coming up as expecting a Xerox attack yet, but I suspect that is only a matter of time. Now this base in itself should be relatively power self-sufficient. We have pa solar panels on both sides at two levels. So we're fairly good at bringing in the solar power. And as you can see, because we have a so solar um, array in here somewhere it will actually give us the amount of charge da, 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 da. i'm looking for it battery yeah battery at the moment zero percent but that's probably because this is still on if we turn this off we might be it might be charging so current output is three kilowatts oh no current output from the solar panel is three killer units and the current consumption is only 0.2 so we should be charging up our battery which we have several up here with that that was the base that is our humble abode for our starter base we're very fortunate to have a 
medical bay early on. Um, we will certainly be looking at getting some grow plots on the go. Now, what else was it we needed to do today? We needed to... He says, going back in the base. You can see these solar panels are nicely picking up because they are facing west, which is picking up a lot of sun. And in the mornings, it'll be picking up on the other side. Or in the evenings. Sorry. Um, now, we hopefully need to turn this one on to all the things. And with any luck, this should be able to build, because this is a large constructor, should be able to build our better drill. And I would like to show you just how much better the better drill is. Better drill, where are you? Da, 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 da. Where are you? Ah, <laughs> scroll up and scroll up. It's right there. So we're probably going to need some silicon. Which we don't, ha which I didn't bring any with me. So we'll either need to go and get some silicon, or pick up a few rocks worth. Which of which there's probably a bit kicking around here somewhere. I know I put the base on top of one silicon rock, which is a little bit frustrating. But um, I'm sure there's probably some silicon rocks here. We often find silicon rocks near water edge. So we'll have a quick scooter boot here. There looks like there looks to be some over there. Yeah, we can go out and just pick those up. And I would expect that will probably be enough for us to get the drill on the go. Now, we don't have much in the way of drill charges. I believe we have one or two somewhere, which I might have to go back to the other base for. So we will be limited on drill charges until we manage to pick up some pentaxid. Now... Something I will probably take the opportunity to show you right now. Not Pentaxis, Promethean. Is that sometimes, and I don't know if this is one of the cases, so forgive me if this turns out not to have any. But it isn't un that unusual to find Promethean or even Pentaxid under the water. That can be very useful. You can sometimes find just the odd rock here and there and thereabouts. I'm really worried I'm going to get ganked by a um, Tallura pod while I'm here. Um, but yeah, under the water you can often find them. But these here's a few things to remember. If you do decide to explore under the water, your gun, well, this gun still works. Um, I don't believe the assault rifle does work most of the guns do not work underwater you cannot really swim in a minute i'm not i'm jumping to get up above the water but i'm not going to be able to get very far oh god um for some reason he didn't attack me he seems to be letting me um carry on but this is because i'm carrying a gun oh god oh god Oh god, open wound. So, to demonstrate this, I will need to press 1 and then I can swim. Sorry, press 0, so I'm not holding a weapon, and then I can swim. Only when you can sw only when you're not holding a weapon can you swim. And it's important to remember that, because when these little buggers attack you, like the gits they are, you can actually swim away from them. But I'm just trying to scout around now and see if I can see any Promethean rocks. The other thing that's very handy to remember is you can't do, well, you can swim when you don't have a spacesuit, but if you do, you can run out of air. And you can still run out of air, but I mean, I've got quite a lot of oxygen, so I'm pretty much okay. And the other thing is I left, I left my ship off, which means my food is perishing in the fridge. Sad times. Now, other useful things you can find under here are things like this. You can tend to find quite useful things under the water, but it is a bit of a chore. But these, I believe, so I may turn out to be proven wrong, are alien plasma. And these are also alien plasma. 
these can be very handy for certain medical needs. And these kelp, these are food, plant protein. So there is often, if you can find water sources, other good things to find in the water. But finding a lot of this stuff is a bit of a chore. See, there's a pentaxid there. But they are few and far between. You can sometimes find cobalt, you can sometimes find promethean. But not in vast quantities. And I was hoping that I would be lucky enough to find one promethean rock. Because one promethean rock would be enough to let us build maybe one or two drill charges. But that seems not to be the case. Uh, more plant protein, more pentaxid. Pentaxid, really we don't have a big use for pentaxid now. I'm just picking some up. I mean, we will want it later on. Pentaxid equals power for shields and equals power for warp drives. I'm just scooting a boot to see if I can find any Promethean rocks, which appears to be a no. So what's probably going to be easier for us is to dive out and head over to either this Talon area. We're quite friendly with the Talon now, so we could pick up some Promethean there for sure. I don't think we got we had any drill charges in the ship, and I can't really be bothered to go back. No, we've only got multi-tool charges on us, so that was foolish of us. And you need Promethean pellets to make the drill charges. So we'll put those these rocks in, at least, and we'll put those in as well. And we'll chuck the other things in the fridge. There you go, good stuff. And that should at least allow us to make the drill. No? Still no? Energy matrix. What, what does an energy matrix require? That's energy matrix, this one. Cobalt. Damn you! So to get the drill... Ooh, sorry. I think my voice is breaking, even though I'm like 40. Um, so that's a bit disappointing. Cobalt. We have some cobalt, though. We have cobalt back at our base. So let's head back across to the other base, which is fine because this would also be an opportunity to pick up that base. Because let's face it, now we don't need that. We can pick it all up and transport it back. At which point we can pick up our drill charges. Oh, what's this? What's that? Oh, that's the, um, uh, this is the scary elder tomb we went to. So this will be a case of pick everything up and transport it over. Unless I find something interesting during this, I will probably cut this little chunk out and, uh, Oh, hello, resources, 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 and talent. Am I heading in the wrong direction? I am heading in the wrong direction. Let's just check out some of these resources before I uh, drive away. I expect them to mostly be iron, because if I look on the map, for example, it tells me I've pretty much found every everything but two iron deposits. Or an iron deposit, so iron deposit, see? Just like that. So anyway, we know our skate pods down over here. Um, unless I find anything particularly exciting, I will cut this out for you and bring you back when I've moved everything over to the base. So welcome back, people. I thought I would just... Um, quickly bring you back in to show you a few other useful tips. I've picked up everything that was in the portable um, constructor there. Obviously I mentioned before but these things nicely produce you water bottles and these O2 bottles which I think I showed you but I wasn't 100% sure so I would just pick those up. But I wanted to show you some other sort of quick chip tricks. Everything that is in here 
I can just line up the scout, put it on the cargo controller and say move everything to here. So that saves me a very quick job. Nice and easy. I've actually disconnected myself from the connected inventory there with that button. So we'll connect ourselves back up again. I'm going to pick up the tent because I don't need that anymore. And I am also going to empty the fridge. I don't need that anymore. And the other thing we're going to do is we are going to, if I can get a good focus on it, is hit P and we will manage the fuel and I don't want to put my fuel in the fridge that seems a little bit unnecessary but we are going to show you how to take all the fuel out so fuel 58 it says total cur current is 174 now you can't take everything if you just type in here like 500 arbitrarily out it comes as much as you can get and it turns it into these small promethium fuel packs even if it was biofuel which can be useful to some extent if you you know there's a bit of a exploit with that where you can turn biofuel into fuel packs but um yeah it's minor so again here we're gonna go and go to the fuel the other way and we'll take the rest of that fuel as well and the other thing we're going to do is use our multi-tool and we are just gonna delete this by retrieving all the blocks yoink 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 always take the core last because if you've cored something or if it's yours with a core in it it will always always give you the full block back when you're using retrieve blocks if you remove the core first it can give you only parts and sometimes you'll get a full core back most of the time you just get small bits so the hover vessel I'm just going to leave there I've not got a lot of use for it I'm not too worried about the parts to, er to erase them slightly disappointingly I didn't see in our inventory and here anywhere and granted I haven't used the sort feature which is down here so we can actually sort item by type like so but I must be deluding myself because there are no drill charges here only multi charges i felt sure we had some but we obviously don't great to have the tool turret though loving the fact i've got an hv tool turret that would be something i may well want to do something with in the near future but because i'm thinking drill but the, i gotta be honest they're not fantastic i'm not in love with the um drills I'm going to put those in my inventory because I forgot to pick them up before, which could have been fatal. I'm going to move those across. That takes that weight out of my inventory. And that should be everything. And we have successfully left. Ah, one other thing I almost forgot to pick up, which is over here somewhere. Is we have over here, let's not forget, we had a water generator over here somewhere right by this slime oh she's a bit sluggish when she's loaded up so sit her down and we have a water gener generator over here it has finished generating its water it is full we're gonna switch back to our connected inventory because these are extremely heavy if i go and put these in here 24 and i'm full so we'll stick all of those in our connected inventory and again just like tents and everything else just shift f4 pick that one up and we can take that one with us and we'll have some water some plenty of water that we can use for making things like fuel cells which are high level item so we can't make those at the moment but we can also make things like um oxygen with it but as you'll notice, I am very loaded up now. She is struggling to really fly upwards. And you'll notice also, my top speed has dropped significantly. Plus, once again, I am flying in the wrong direction. So let's hang a Louis. Even though I'm going right, we'll just ignore my sense of direction. 
Oh, but yes, one downside with these ships, and I do like it to some extent, is that when you have the mass and volume checks on, you do find the ship is more sluggish, is more heavy when she's under load. And to me, that's fine. It makes complete sense. It's the way it should be. And I am still going north again. What What is my predilection to north at the moment? Something else that I could be finding useful to, to help myself is that, sure, my base is here, which is the note. If I right click on it, I can say, this is my base. I want a waypoint. Show it on the HUD always and keep it. And there we are. Now I know where I'm going. I'm not lost. So those are excellent ways of keeping everything in check. Now, another good thing now, we've got a proper base. The Nook should, I believe, unless I forgot, has a Wi-Fi built into it. So I can literally just fly over the Nook, get within range, and dump all these goodies. As long as I'm within 100 meters, I can literally just connect. So we will just hover here, open up our connected inventories, and there we go. Look. And I can just drop everything in. Just like that. I'll select what I want to keep which is I would very much like to keep my armor, please. I'll take a couple of oxygens. I will... I'll wait on doing anything with those. I don't think any of those are particularly useful. Um, we'll have a look at the fridge situation as well. We'll go to the input fridge. And we'll, well, we'll, put, we'll put most of these in the input fridge, though. Personally, I don't think all of them need to be in, in the input fridge. I can organize my inventories later. I'll keep the bandages, and actually I'll keep the meds to hand in this fridge. Um, and I'll probably take half of those and leave those there. Um, and I'm actually going to eat one of those, and maybe another one. So with that, we are pretty now tidy. This is, the, this is empty, the nook is there, and we should be a lot faster moving now. That Tuluropod is going to overkill die, because I don't like Tuluropods, but I like to live by the beach. So with this, I am going to keep the power on. Oh, power on. I'll turn the thrusters off. So we have good power lifetime. As you can see, I'm a bit low on oxygen. Um, this isn't going to get us very far. Ooh, look, I've still got all my water and stuff. Because it's on the toolbar, I've still got all my water and my tent and everything in the inventory. So I will literally do that a second. Connect that back up because I will... I don't want it connected to the Nook, I want it connected to the Scout. Um, go back to the Nook, and we'll move that one over as well. And that one. Um, no, I will keep the tent. So, one thing we can do, we can make now, which is going to be highly useful to make with a small constructor, is proper oxygen bottles. If we go to, I believe it is here, there, we have proper oxygen bottles. Right there, I can make myself a proper oxygen bottle, and that will make two of those, I believe. And that will probably be enough to fill the scout up. I'm also going to make myself this little puppy, which is a texture tool, just so I can fix the texturing on the health, on the health bay. So pick that up, I'll turn that off just to save power for the minute while we keep the base charging up. Now, let's switch that over, because that'll be a pain. And the scout, we'll put that there, and we can actually put the scout back here, and go to oxygen, 
Okay. Yep, that fills it. That fills her up. Not a problem. Um, another useful thing is that here. Look, all the thi when I'm connected to all the things now, because I have lined this up on a constructor, it now has this symbol, which allows me to access the constructor remotely. So, just a useful tip. And texture tool tips, if you want to do it, you can bring up by right clicking here. Texture tools, colors, it normally comes up with if the base has been set certain colors. So there we go, we can make that match. And with that, we can go to sleep. Ah, you know what we can do before we go to sleep? You know what we can do before we go to sleep? Um, oh, we need a large constructor for that, don't we? Turn a large constructor on a second. We can build ourselves a drill, which we don't have any drill bits for. I'm just wondering if you can put, you can build the drill items in here. Can you build them? This is something I don't remember. Can you build them in a portable constructor? Inquiring minds want to know because a portable constructor to build that in portable constructor would save me coming back. I can put that on my connected inventory and I can put that down and then I can have a look. Let's have a look here. I can. Excellent. Great to know. So that means fuel packs. What do I need for them? Just let me double check. What do I need for them? I need promethium pellets, steel plates and carbon substrate. So I better take some carbon substrate with me when I go hunting tomorrow for Prometheum. So I think the next episode is going to be me showing off the better drill. I would like to welcome you to the Nook and our new humble abode. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe as always and join us again next time. Thanks a lot.